Hello everyone and welcome to Songistry's live intro webinar. This is David Vidala from RBMG. Songistry is currently private with the intention of going public. Joining us today is the company's founder and CEO, Justin Gray, who will be going through Songistry's June investor presentation. This will include an overview of current operations, recent achievements, and upcoming milestones. At the end of the presentation, we will open it up for questions for management to address. If you are interested in asking a question and are logged into the Zoom app or web platform, you can submit your questions to us directly in the Q&A module. Please note, this presentation is being recorded today, Thursday, June 23rd, 2022, and will soon be made available on the company's website at wearemidio.com. That's W-E-A-R-E-M-D-I-I-O.com. Today's call may contain forward-looking statements that are subject to risks and uncertainties that may cause actual results, performance, or developments to differ, to differ materially from those contained in the statements and are not guarantees of future performance of the company. No assurance can be given that any of the events anticipated by the forward-looking statements will occur, or if they do occur, what benefits the company may obtain from them. Also, some risks and uncertainties may be out of the control of the company. Songistry has a full disclaimer on page two of their investor presentation. Lastly, RBMG is not a registered investment advisor or broker dealer. For more information, please visit rbmilestone.com. And now I'll hand it off to Justin. Justin, the stage is yours. Nice to meet everybody. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. My name is Justin Gray. I am the founder, I am the CEO and president of Songistry. We are a Canadian based company. And uh, I just wanted to thank you for joining us today. I will be running through our, uh, as David mentioned, our June um, investor deck, uh, which will talk about our various different products that we have uh, created, um, current state of uh, our company, and as mentioned, um, forward, and uh, even part of our blue sky vision uh, of what it is that we uh, are hoping to accomplish uh, in the next three to five years. So thank you very much, David. and. Uh, Let's go through it. As he mentioned, if there is any questions, uh, please don't hesitate to put them into the chat and we will address them during the Q&A portion. So sit back, relax, grab your coffee and here we go. Uh, hold on. This is there we go. All right. Uh, as you saw that we uh, went through a disclaimer. Uh, this is also available, as mentioned, on page two of our deck. So. Let's start with a little bit of um, history on uh, why I did this. Uh, we will get to my own personal bio uh, in a few moments, but let me just give a little bit of a uh, precursor to that. As I mentioned, I'm Justin Gray. I am the chairman, I'm the founder, the CEO of Songistry Inc. But in my other life, I am a songwriter and a record producer. I have worked with some of the world's biggest stars. Uh, I've worked on some of the world's biggest films. Uh, I've had, I don't know what the number is now, probably 9 billion streams um, with various different artists, including Mariah Carey, Avril Lavigne, John Legend, but I've also worked on major films. Uh, and I continue to work uh, as, a, as a songwriter and a producer. Uh, the reason I continue to do that is that it is very important for me to also be living the life of which I'm trying to also help. Uh, I have songwriters uh, that are friends of mine that have worked on some of the biggest artists in the world. Uh, and if there's any awareness of the current state of how a songwriter gets paid, um, it is very, very meager. They're the first ones to, uh, to, to, to have to give up their earnings in order to, uh, uh, to, 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 um, to trade that off for opportunity. So oftentimes they're giving away 50 to 75% of their revenue to third parties, to, to, to um, uh, agencies that are representing them, to managers, to music publishers, right? So there's a lot of people in the, in the pockets of songwriters. So as we stay here, there's a statement, songwriters often struggle to earn a living because of a massive opportunity gap. What does that specifically mean? Well, for one, a song needs to have millions and millions and millions of streams in order to generate a living wage for a songwriter. And again, some people don't realize this, but one song sometimes may contain multiple songwriters. So if there are four songwriters on one song, they're each splitting that very, very small performance earning that they get from a stream 
or from a download or from a television performance of a song. So again, you have to have a tremendously high volume of success in order to actually create a living wage. I have friends of mine that I know personally that have songs on artists like Beyonce and they are driving DoorDash so that they can pay their rent. I just think that's completely unacceptable. What I've endeavored to do as a songwriter is to give opportunity back to those songwriters that need it. How do I do it? Well, I started doing a lot of work in film and television. You can make a lot of money licensing your music to film and television, but where we talk about an opportunity gap, we actually talk about songwriters create music in their bedrooms, in their basements, whatever but they don't understand how to then take that and monetize those the, the music that they've written to find opportunities for those placements. Again, what they also don't understand is that when you are licensing a song to film, television, video game, user-generated content like YouTube videos, TikTok, whatever, you still own those songs. You are just granting the rights or the license. So you can actually license a song over and over and over and over again. Really quickly here at the bottom of the page, you'll see, so we've created four additional um, verticals within our songistry corporation. One is MIDIA, which stands for Music Data Intelligence In and Out. That is a tool that allows a songwriter to house, store, and manage all of their content. We then created something called MDXO, MIDIO X, which is a global songwriting camp. In fact, we had, our, we had one yesterday. We had songwriters from all over the world log into Zoom. We set them up on virtual writing sessions. We have mentors come in and help guide them to create better songs. Uh, we also, and so we did that yesterday. We had, and it was amazing actually. We had members from Czech Republic, South Africa, uh, obviously all over Canada, all over the US. Uh, I think we had one writer from Ireland, so a couple from the UK. So we are starting to see a global, uh, you know, a global growth within the songwriting community. Um, Next we have, well I'm gonna skip over Hyper Audio because we just launched that and we're gonna talk about that more in depth later. Next we have another program called Midio U which is educational webinar series. Again, we wanna do these things for free. Songwriters have everybody's hands in their pockets. We wanted to educate them and arm them with the tools to be able to become better songwriters to increase their chances of getting their music licensed and to increase their viability for uh, generating income. And finally, our most recently launched product called Hyper Audio. Hyper Audio is an AI-driven tool that allows music supervisors to come and find music from our database of more than 100,000, soon to be close to a half a million songs that they can then license. So what we wanted to do is create both the funnel and the content to, um, to build revenue opportunities for songwriters. Let's talk about the industry here for a moment. Okay, so the sync business generates more than a billion dollars per year in sync revenues. What does that mean? Let's discuss what sync is. Sync is the concept of synchronizing music to picture. And I just want to talk about a quick side story that we don't that is not mentioned in this, but I think it is uh, an interesting case study in the in the uh, um, the experience of when the right song marries to the right picture. We were just talking about this just before this uh, webinar with the song Running Up That Hill by Kate Bush. So that song has now become uh, very, very popular uh, local in, in, oh, around the world because of its exposure in the show Stranger Things. We had remarked that I thought it was funny that if you were somehow able to travel back in time to 1985 and tell Kate Bush, hey, you think this song is big now, wait 37 years, I think that you would find that very hysterical. I think it's amazing, but again, it's just a reaffirmation of the value of how a song married with a picture can be a huge benefit to everybody involved. She's made more money in that song now than she did originally when it was released. So again, we have over a billion dollars a year in sync licenses annually. Now again, to put this into perspective, every time that you hear a piece of music attached to a TV show, attached to a video game, attached to a YouTube video, even attached to a TikTok, that music has to be contracted and licensed. So we are talking about almost a, 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 an exponential amount of growth opportunity year over year, day over day. There's 40,000 songs per day uploaded to DSPs, Spotify, Apple Music, any of the likes, uh, uh, any, any of those sorts of um, access points for music. So, but what's interesting is that less, more than 75% of those songs earn less than $1. What that means is 
those songs have been uploaded and there is literally no monetization happening. And what's even crazier about that is that the songs that are in less than one, $1 also represent about 80% of the actual community of creators that upload their music to Spotify hoping to find a hit, get a playlist, hoping for some sort of exposure. So again, the idea is how do we go back and create a tool set or an opportunity for those creators, those millions and millions of songs and those millions of creators to earn revenue from their music. That's what we have built here. Uh, and finally, every quote unquote professional songwriter is affiliated to what's called a PRO, a performance, a performance rights organization. In Canada, we have SOCAN. In the US, we have BMI, ASCAP, CSAC to a smaller degree. Globally, every country has their own PRO. A PRO is the body that collects all of the revenue from any of the performances and then distributes them across to all of the songwriters. So within uh, every PRO, less than 5% earn more than $200 a year from music royalties. Again, this is unacceptable. This is the devaluation of music, and we are here to solve that problem. Not we are here to solve that problem, we are solving that problem. Um, Again, we'll talk about this very briefly. The current music licensing methodology is antiquated, analog, clunky, and outdated, making it difficult to discover new music. And new music industry, the music industry is notoriously slow to adapt and adopt new technology. So let me break that down for a moment. How currently a music supervisor will find a song. They will say, I need to find something that sounds like this, and they will send that out to 100, 200, whatever, uh, contact points who will then flood music back to them that they will then go and curate all of those songs. It could be a thousand songs for one slot, one placement. It takes weeks to go through that. And so that's why sometimes, and again, if you're not aware, sometimes you might get a license request for a song and then not hear back from six months for six months. The idea is how do we close that gap between discovery and licensing and make it fair and equitable so that everybody that's involved in that transaction can can function at the highest level. Again, we have solved that problem. Um, we're going to move on to the next slide. So as I said, let's go back and kind of break down our two key monetization platforms. The first is Midio. Midio is, stands for Music Data Intelligence in and out It is a uh, supply-side portfolio platform for publishers and creators. What this means is you upload your song, we analyze those songs, we, we apply the AI that we are pulling from every single bit of audio, we're storing that data and we're giving that information back to you. We track who your collaborators are, we track who owns what percentage of the songs, we track different various variations and iterations of those songs, we track all of the lyrics, we track all of the metadata. Now again, I want to go through this because some of you may not really understand how important metadata is. Metadata is the digital information that's embedded into every song. So if that metadata is incorrect, it will cause that song to A, not be discovered, B, may perhaps you, you can't get paid uh, for the song, uh, or, or C, it's just poor, poorly organized. Imagine, um, you know, um, imagine trying to uh, scan through a, your television guide and not know what shows are on or, or, or what time they're on. That would be like trying to find a song with no metadata. This is a very similar kind of analogy. Um, from, and also, just another thing to, to, um, to explain here is that if every songwriter, sorry, every songwriter has what's called an IPI number, that is a unique number that identifies them with their performance rights organization. So for example, let's say we're just gonna use the song, let's say we wrote a song called Portfolio Platform, and uh, one of my collaborators misspelled the word portfolio. Nobody gets paid. Let's say one of my collaborators registers the song with my PRO, but instead of uh, registering my song one two one you know one two three four five six, they register it as one two three four five five. Nobody gets paid. Let's say they register it as it's the correct song title, it's the correct IPI number, but instead of spelling my name G R A Y, they spell it G R E Y. Nobody gets paid. Let's say there's three collaborators on a song. One collaborator uh, says that, you know, that, that they got 33.33. The other says 33.33. 33. 
and the other claims 33.33. So in other words, the song doesn't add up to 100%. Nobody gets paid. So we clean up that whole point of contact and create a single point of truth for every single song and copyright. That's what Midio does. It's also a platform that allows uh, artists to search through their catalog and then pitch and share their music accordingly. So we had all of these members at the time when we built Midio. We had uh, about 4,000 members worldwide. And um, we were kind of looking at each other uh, uh, about a year ago this time. We said, hey, we have about 18,000 songs on the platform now and we're not really helping our songwriters get to the next level we're helping them organize yes we're doing that but how do we find them money how do we activate their passive copyrights so we sat back and said hey we have effectively a catalog of 18,000 songs I think it was at the time maybe a little bit less why don't we find a, a tool or a platform that we can then push those songs out and create opportunity for them. So we started conceptualizing and then we came up with Hyper Audio. So what we've done now is we've taken all of these assets that we're storing and housing and we're actually giving them a platform to be able to find and monetize. That's what Hyper Audio is. It is the demand side search platform for buyers and customers of songs. This is where music supervisors and music publish and, and songwriters and creators and music publishers link in one transformational music licensing platform. It is powered by AI. So what we do is the same artificial intelligence that learns and identifies attributes within the songs over 200 different metadata points, then gets applied and used and reconfigured to then be discoverable to our front end. And how does that work? It's very cool. You can copy and paste a YouTube link, a SoundCloud link, or even upload an MP3, we will do an analysis of those and then merge those two together to spit out a result set of songs that we represent that can then be licensed. So we take literal weeks and weeks of work and we distill and filter that down into seconds. Uh, same with the licensing process. So powered by AI, Hyper Audio is the future of music licensing for everyone where music supervisors and music makers meet in one transformational music licensing platform. Let's go back to this. So I want to talk about how and why we're different. Um, we are a global marketplace for analyzed, pre-cleared, and ready to license music powered by AI. So as mentioned, we had less than 20,000 songs, about 18,000 songs on the platform when we endeavored to create Hyper Audio uh, within, and, and just under 4,000 members within uh, less than a year, quite frankly, within less than 60 days, since we've launched Hyper Audio, we have, we're almost at 100,000 songs. We have another 200,000 songs in the queue ready to be ingested through various different partnerships. We anticipate having over a million licensed, pre-cleared, and ready-to-go music and tracks within the next 12 months. That makes us one of the largest sources for licensable music. Uh, across the, the globe. It makes us competitive with major music publishers. And the best part about it is we are non-exclusive to any of our members. So we can actually uh, in, onboard anybody. Uh, and we're actually seeing a ton of growth on that through different JVs that we're building as well. Um, we even just had a conversation last week with uh, a, another potential a million song partner. So uh, we do see a tremendous need and, a, and, a, uh, and support within the industry for what it is that we're building here. We've created user-friendly platforms, enabling the music industry to transact seamlessly and more securely. Um, we have add, we're adding value by increasing a catalog of licensable tracks from over 100,000 to 1 million in 2023, as I mentioned. Um, the, 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 the real spot where we fit in, especially with uh, larger scale music publishers, is they only monetize five to six percent of their catalog, meaning that they have 95, 94 to 95 percent of their songs that literally sit there inactive, dormant, non-earning. Well, we can help create and activate income from passive copyrights like that. That's exactly where we sit in and we where we fit in. And that is a huge um, positive 
feedback that we're getting from music publishers. And so that's why we're able to enter into these JVs. And again, where we fit in, we take 20% of every transaction that we that we facilitate on their behalf. So if we're saying, hey, we can house and store your music as long as you make it available for licensing and we'll take 20% of that transaction, really there's no, um, there's no uh, downside to bringing on new partners. And uh, we have seen an incredible uptick uh, in new JVs. And we have a very, very strong team of people with success in AI and music industries. And I want to talk about those people a little bit. There's me, uh, definitely incredibly handsome, tremendously smart. I'm kidding. Um, well, my mother thinks so. Uh, but I have uh, a strong history, as, uh, as I mentioned, uh, as, uh, as a songwriter and a record producer. Uh, I've been um, trying to solve music industry problems for years, ever since I started doing this. Uh, and this information is available um, in our deck, so please, by all means, go and read it on your own. Let me brag about some of the other people on our team here. Uh, Ryan Mall uh, is somebody that we met uh, uh, about five years ago. He was heading SoCan Labs, as I mentioned. SoCan is a PRO, Canada's largest PRO. Uh, and uh, we his job was to kind of find new technologies that he believed in and figured out ways to integrate with SoCan. So we started talking about five years ago. We had some partnerships with SoCan. Um, we had the opportunity to uh, steal him and have him come work with us. There's probably nobody in the world, in my opinion, that understands the intersection of music and technology and copyright uh, and opportunity quite like Ryan. So we're extremely um, honored to have him as part of our team. He's our Vice President of Strategy and Operations. Uh, next, we have Jason Vandenberg, who is our CFO. Uh, again, uh, Jason is um, incredibly ethical. He's a he's an in, invaluable member of our team. Uh, but as you can see, as you can see, he brings over 20 years of management experience and has been involved in substantial growth in multiple companies, organically and through acquisition and integration of over 40 businesses. Uh, again, please feel free to read these um, uh, at at your leisure. Uh, and uh, the rest of our executive team is a gentleman by the name of Bob Bryant, and he is our CTO. Bob has been crucial in architecting uh, and strategizing both our Midio and our Hyper Audio uh, platforms. And uh, we are about to endeavor on Midio 2.0, which is going to be a significantly improved uh, platform for all of our current Midio and future Midio members. Uh, again, I did forget to mention that um, before we launched Hyper Audio, uh, we had just under 4,000 members, and now we are about to crack 8,000, uh, mostly in the last. Um, 60 days based on additional members of our team. Actually, in fact, I'll go back. Uh, we have um, a gentleman by the name of uh, Kevin who came over to us from Amazon Music. He is uh, works with us in marketing. We have Chelsea uh, Davis, who is our customer experience specialist. We have Sarah Martinico, who came over to us from BMG Music Publishing, Native Instruments. Uh, she worked very closely with Avid, which is the people that make Pro Tools. Um, She's an incredible part of our day-to-day -day strategy and, and our team as well. So we have uh, incredible talent uh, on our team, and um, we're excited to, uh, to see where the future goes. Uh, I'd like to talk a little bit about some of our advisors. There's some people that ha are not on this list, uh, but we'll just stick to the ones that are on this list. Uh, Steve Kane, uh, he is um, currently the Director of Business Development and Industry Affairs at Make Music Matter. He is actually, he has corrected me, he was actually the CEO and president of Warner Music Canada up until November of last year. Uh, he is, quite frankly, one of the very few people that understands the global music economy. He is a huge fan of what we're doing, and uh, he will be a, a, an invaluable member of our advisors. Um, I want to talk about Ron Fair a little bit. Ron Fair is one of the most prolific and successful music producers and music executives in modern pop music. Uh, he has worked with and developed and created careers for everybody from Black Eyed Peas to Mary J. Blige to Christina Aguilera. I mean, the list goes on. He's a absolute um, uh, um, superstar in uh, in in music uh, in the music executive and music creator community. Um, Chris Tordo is a uh, in, uh, is a former CEO. He is a uh, he has seen and advised multiple companies to a multi billion dollar exits. Uh, he is uh, has has become a friend of ours, and he is an incredible asset 
uh, and he will be crucial in helping us grow our company and building it into the unicorn that we believe it could be. That probably is a forward-leaning statement. Uh, Chris Taylor. Uh, Chris was my original music attorney, attorney and manager. Uh, he actually did my first publishing deal for me, but since then, he's gone on to represent literally Canada's biggest expat stars, people like Drake, um, Avril Lavigne, uh, some 41. I mean, the list goes on. He is now currently the president and CEO of Monarch Music Group, uh, formerly E1. Um, again, uh, he was named Time Magazine's uh, most important people in the music business. So this is, again, somebody who is uh, uh, remarkably exceptional at what they do. And I think you'll see that with all of our advisors. They are all top, top, top tier people. Um, we have David Vonka, who is uh, an investor, but he is also a, a incredibly educated and smart when it comes to um, finance. He is the partner managing director and portfolio manager at ICM Asset Management. Um, again, huge supporter, uh, and I'm sure any of our uh, advisors would be happy to speak to anybody here. Uh, Sarah Kazi, who is uh, senior vice president of sports entertainment at Raymond James. Again, she is also an investor in our company, but she is um, remarkably also smart in finance and has been um, leading the charge on catalog acquisitions, uh, music catalog acquisitions, so very much tied to the concept of finance and copyright. Uh, Bonnie McKee is a songwriter. She is one of the most successful songwriters in the last 10 years of pop music, having written everything from Britney Spears, most notably, and probably one of my favorites of hers was uh, the song um, uh, uh, Teenage Dream by Katy Perry. So she is, uh, again, incredibly successful songwriter. She is one of our advisors. And finally, Corey Hunt, who uh, was a co-founder of PNC Ventures. Corey uh, came in as an investor and was so impressed that, um, that he wanted to just be an advisor and be a part of our story as we kept this growing. So let's talk about Midio a little bit, and I don't want to uh, go too, too long here. Um, Midio is where uh, somebody, this is my profile page, uh, where everyone, we can store everything associated with your songs, including your tracks, metadata, collaborator, splits, playlists, pitches, network, splits, and, oh, that's double splits. Um, uh, sorry, that's not, and even licenses. So really simply, this is the warehouse of data attached to every single song that you are writing. Uh, opportunities to monetize directly through Midio projects. So we have a projects page uh, where where we work directly with music supervisors and we post projects. A case in point, you're going to see slightly later in the um, uh, in the presentation that we just did a uh, a pilot show, not a pilot show, a pilot deal with uh, a ten episode show that just finished airing on Fox Business called Billion Dollar Idea. We provided all of the music for that show. We provided over four hundred licenses for their 10 episodes and I think I'm not sure what quite what the number is but I think over 50 of our members actually got their music licensed uh, so incredible proof of concept for us very very exciting opportunities coming forward with them again they can build community through Midio Network think of it as LinkedIn but for songwriters and creators and community engagement via Midio U and Midio X events which we also talked about um, supply side flat Pat the supply side platform Sorry, I'm speaking fast. I'm trying to get this in under the wire. Um, again, this is just an expansion of Midio, where artists build and securely store their music portfolios. And here's part of our growth strategy. We are now seeing this work in real time. We're creating brand ambassadors. We're creating partnerships. We are about to endeavor into industry and event marketing. Uh, we are looking at doing some music publishing and some mergers and acquisitions moving forward. We are actively, actively um, pursuing all of those opportunities currently as we speak. Our current partnerships as exist, SoCan, Music NL, which is Music Newfoundland and Labrador, Slam Academy, Spirit Production Music, Pure Noise, which is another music publisher, One Hit Away Music, Berkeley College of Music Alumni, Women Crush Music. Uh, so, and, and actually, by the way, there's even more that have happened even since we put this deck together and finalized it a couple weeks ago. So by all means, um, keep, keep tabs on us and we will be making more announcements as to more partnerships as we go along. Let's talk about Hyper Audio. So as I mentioned, Hyper Audio is the front end search tool. Imagine the concept of Travelocity, but for songs. Imagine the concept of Google, but for licensable music. That's what it is. It is a search engine that links our music that we house on Midio with licensing opportunities on the front end. 
Um, that is quite simply the easiest way to kind of frame it, especially for people that are maybe a little bit uncertain on how music copyright and licensing works. Imagine uh, if you were to go book a flight, you go to Travelocity or Expedia and you say, I need to go from here to here and this time and Travelocity were to give you the best options across, you know, I don't know, whatever it is, 30 different airline choices. Think of it similarly to us. I need to find this song and I need to match it using an MP3 as a reference point or a YouTube link as a reference point point or a SoundCloud link as a reference point and we will spit up options that you can then use to replace the song that it is that, it, that, that you need to replace and so again to put a little context to this when a music supervisor or a music editor uh, sorry or an editor is putting together a scene to present it to clients they will often use what's called a temp song so it might be a very very successful and popular song that they know they can't clear the rights to and license because it maybe it's too expensive, maybe it's too complicated, right? Maybe maybe the, the time frame doesn't doesn't allow it. Maybe that song is too popular and too exposed, right? I know that if you watch TV commercials, you probably heard Uptown Funk getting used quite a bit at one point. So sometimes they don't want to, or maybe a song is too affiliated to maybe another tech brand and they're trying to you know, use a piece of music for a Samsung, but it's already been used in an Apple ad, whatever the case might be. A music editor will use a temp. And so what we can do is we can take that temp song and we can put that, analyze that temp song and spit out matches that can then be basically swapped out. So they can, it, they'll, they'll have the same feel, the same tempo, the same instrumentation, the same dynamics, the same emotion, but they will be cheaper and basically pre-cleared and easy to clear, meaning easy to license songs. So they can't afford Uptown Funk for $500,000, but they can afford running change for $5,000. That's where we fill that gap. Um, massive amounts of opportunity there. Uh, and, uh, and again, we're connecting the owners of these songs with people looking. Or as we say, we are, where those looking to be discovered are matched with those looking to discover. Uh, it's a global marketplace for analyzed and pre-cleared and ready to license music powered by AI. Better, faster, and cheaper process, redefining the current outdated workflows as we discussed earlier. And quite simply, it's the most comprehensive music search platform. So again, better, faster, and cheaper is a big part of our um, uh, of our sort of internal mantra um, in, in how we want to build Hyper Audio. Here is how we build this growth strategy. We engage with music supervisors. So we are looking at sponsorships right now with the Guild of Music Supervisors. That is the if the ostensibly the, 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 the governing platform for every music supervisor globally. Uh, we are going to be doing sponsorships. We're going to be very, very actively activating uh, those relationships as well. Blanket licensing agreements. Now, what does that mean? That means that, for example, as I mentioned, we did this show called Billion Dollar Idea. Well, it's a hassle to be able to, to have to license 400 songs. So we say, here, we're going to do one license and take whatever you want. That's what a blanket license. They pay us a set fee. It's all dependent on many things. Uh, it could be dependent on, for example, a, a blanket with NBC would be more valuable than a blanket with a small production company doing one show. But what we do is we create blank. We want to make an ease of use so that they can just take whatever they want. We take our share. We pay our community um, going forward. So we are very actively engaging in, in building uh, blanket license agreements um, across all uh, types of partnerships, all the way up to the biggest um, broadcasters to smallest independent film and television production companies, even even video game. Um, and then key music industry sponsorships. So the idea is to be very, very present and activated. Uh, we just recently were in um, New Orleans at part of NOLA Music Tech, and we're looking to get very integrated into different uh, communities and opportunities um, moving forward, um, not least of which are things like Reaper Bond in Germany, uh, Slush in Finland, uh, ASCAP Music Expo, which just passed us, which we will be involved with next year, but we want to be very actively engaged in the community uh, directly to songwriters. Um, and then here's our target audience, broadcasters, advertising agencies, social media platforms, uh, production and company production companies and production houses, trailer houses and film production. So again, we're building and staffing up to go and start opening up and creating those relationships. Let's talk about the creation of the value creation because we did talk about this and this gives us a moment to get a little bit more specific. 
Um, catalog and search growth will allow Songstreet to monetize 6% of its catalog in, in 2024. Sorry, my uh, screen here is covered uh, on an annual basis. So, here, so try and understand this math. For every 100 songs on Hyper Audio, we expect to license six of those songs. Now, that is consistent with industry standards of any music publisher not using AI. So again, I just wanted to state that we are, I think we are being um, conservative in these numbers, but uh, also we wanted to be realistic and we wanted to give opportunity for growth. So for every 100 songs on Hyper Audio, we expect to license six of those songs. Each, song, each licensed song is expected to generate an average of $1,000 US. Now, we might have songs that are gratis, we might have songs that license for $5,000. The, co the point is that the average value of every song is $1,000. So what we're taking, and we take 20% of that fee, we pass 80% onto the client. So conceptually, for every 100 songs, Songistry receives $6,000 in gross revenue, right? We take our $1,200 off of that $6,000, we pay through our 48. So what we do now is we now take that $1,200, reapply it against the 100 songs, and we come up with what we, we call a net residual value of, ten, of $12 US per song. So we can extrapolate that every song uploaded has a value of $12 to us, whether or not it gets licensed. In context, there is a company that was recently valued at $1.5 billion called Epidemic Sound. They have a net residual value of about $1,700 per song. So we have 12, they have 1,700. I believe strongly that uh, when we are functioning fully, uh, we could double and triple that. Again, that is a forward statement, but again, we wanted to be extremely conservative on how we valued uh, each song on our platform. So we believe that a $12 net residual value per song on the platform is, uh, is, is a tremendous opportunity, meaning that if we have a million songs on the platform, there's a $12 million per year net residual value for housing and representing licensing opportunities for those 12 songs. And again, um, that's very consistent with industry standards and averages. So let's look at the case study for, um, for Fox Business Show as we discussed Billion Dollar Idea. So Billion Dollar Idea produced by Warm Springs it was the music was provided by Hyper Audio. Now the math is a little bit off, but I do want to explain this to you because we just did talk about a thousand dollar per license. Uh, but again, we also talked about smaller value licenses. So we had over twelve hundred songs submitted by our community. Four hundred of those were used uh, and representing over fifty members. And actually, that was a uh, twenty-two thousand um, uh, dollar opportunity that we had to split. Um, we had, to, we had to split because we needed to do some custom creation. Having said that, the growth opportunity with this partnership at Warm Springs is they produce 30 to 40 shows per year and their music budgets typically range between 20 to $25,000 uh, per show. Again, blanket licensing. We can look at creating a potential music partnership with Warm Springs that would represent an annual revenue of six to $800,000. Um, that is the case study with, uh, with um, Billion Dollar Idea and Warm Springs Production. Let's look at our roadmap. So here's our 2022-2023 roadmap. Uh, enterprise catalog onboarding is our number one priority for the remaining this year, for the rest of this year and moving forward. Uh, what does that mean? It means we are going to go and create new partnerships with music publishers, with, uh, with music libraries, with songwriters. We want to create and put as much content and make that as, uh, as, a, as much content available as possible on Hyper Audio. Um, currently building relationships with music creatives, leveraging Songistry's uh, catalog and filling licenses. So uh, Q2 2022, which we are right in the throes of, uh, we are, we're launching Hyper Audio, which we did. We have 100,000 uh, plus songs uh, in Hyper Audio, which we are about to hit. And we have one enterprise client. Um, Q3, uh, we believe we are going to exceed that. But um, right now, Q3, we anticipate having over 300,000 songs. Uh, two enterprise clients and a thousand plus licenses filled. We've already done 400 and we're not even in Q3. Um, Q4, uh, more, more songs in the catalog, more enterprise clients, more licenses filled. And finally, 2023, uh, we are endeavoring to have a million songs, 12 enterprise clients, clients and more than 15,000 licenses filled. So let's keep, uh, let's keep that moving. 
Let's talk about the current structure. Um, our current valuation is $26 million at 54 cents a share. Um, that valuation is about to go up. Um, we have raised uh, just under $12 million, um, and uh, we have uh, just under 48 million outstanding shares. Uh, we have 82 shareholders on our cap table, and 37% um, of the company is owned by insiders. Um, my, I personally own 29%. Um, let's talk about the Blue Sky Vision here. We're almost done, you guys. Let's talk about the Blue Sky Vision. So. Within three to five years, we anticipate a 23% market share, meaning that basically 23 out of every songs licensed for film and television will be run through um, through our various products, including Hyper Audio. Uh, we are methodically building the de facto one-stop music licensing platform in the world by combining bleeding edge AI and high quality music in conjunction in, in conjunction with a simple to use platform. Uh, and uh, we did talk about potentially if there was interest, uh, if anyone wanted to set up a demo to see how it works. Uh, this is not conceptual. We are live uh, and activated. Within five years, uh, we plan to represent the licensing rights to more than two million songs globally compared to quote unquote competitors like Extreme Music, who did $80 million in annual revenue, representing 30,000 owned copyrights and Epidemic Sound, as I mentioned, uh, $1.6 billion valuation from 40,000 owned copyrights. Uh, through M&A and direct signing, Songistry will literally transform music licensing, bringing it into the 21st century. Uh, and uh, that is the end of our presentation. Uh, I think we have some time left here, so I'm going to stop sharing. Um, but uh, by all means, please feel free to connect with, uh, with the RB Milestone Group. Uh, you can see their information there. Again, this is all at the end of our um, investor deck. So thank you so much for taking the time today. Uh, hope that it was engaging and entertaining. And um, yeah, uh, here we are. So right. appreciate you taking the time. J Justin, thank you so much. Um, that was terrific. Um, and if you are interested in asking a question and are logged into the Zoom app or web platform, you can submit your question to us directly in the Q&A module. We have received some questions uh, during the registration process. So why don't we get started with those? You ready, Justin? Absolutely. All right. Well, you know, I know you cover this in the presentation, but what is just a, just in summation, what is the difference between Midio and Hyper Audio? Yeah, that's a great question. I would say the simplest way to describe it is Midio is the platform for the sellers, and Hyper Audio is a platform for the buyers. That is really quite simply the easiest way to discern the difference between the two, and they are interactive um, with each other. Thanks. Um, what are the target clients for Hyper Audio? So uh, the target clients are individual music supervisors all the way up to large scale, uh, you know, what we'll call like power licensors. So take, for example, NBC, right? NBC will produce, um, you know, thousands of shows requiring hundreds of thousands of songs. And uh, they would, you know, so they would be a client of ours all the way down to uh, somebody that may want to license the perfect wedding song for their wedding video, and and they're going to pay somebody five hundred bucks to do that, right? So uh, it's a very, it's an extremely wide um, opportunity uh, on on the on on the sort of like the the, the end user side. Gotcha. All right. Thanks. Uh, what's the difference between so, uh, <clears throat> what's the difference between Songistry and a company like Extreme Music? Great question. Uh, so Songistry is, uh, well, first of all, Songistry is the corporate entity. Uh, Midio is the platform and Hyper Audio is the platform. Uh, Extreme Music is more of a traditional music library, what's called a music library or a music publisher. Uh, they own their content exclusively. Uh, they are not, um, they, they're not, uh, they do good business, but it's not good business for songwriters who give up their rights for, uh, you know, give up half of their rights for, in most cases, no money. Uh, we are non-exclusive. We take no ownership of anybody's rights, uh, and we only earn from whatever it is that we uh, transact on behalf of our members. So um, we are, again, that, that would be like saying, what's the difference between Travelocity and Delta, right? We're, that, that, that's kind of the, the, the best way to describe the differences with the two. Um, we are agnostic, AI-driven, uh, music platform 
to enhance opportunity for licensing for creators and music libraries, uh, extreme music or or epidemic sound or any publisher uh, or music library it doesn't do that. Gotcha. All right. Thank you. All right. So we'll have we have time for one more question. Sure. Uh, how does how does AI help you? How, how does AI help you differentiate uh, from your competitors in the sync licensing market? Uh, these are good questions. Um, so so. The, 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 again, complete, complete honesty and transparency here. AI can sometimes be a little bit of a, have a little bit of a negative tone to it, especially when there are music supervisors who pride themselves on their music taste. Uh, I just had this conversation yesterday with somebody who needed some convincing and it didn't take me long to explain it. We apply, our, our application of AI to help you discover music is and not to be, by the way, not to be mistaken with AI created music. We are, we, this isn't robots or algorithms creating songs. This is real people that have written music, real artists globally um, that have that that are that are trying to, to to earn revenue from their songs. So, so there's a difference between AI music, which is what we are not doing, and using AI to leverage discovery uh, and licensing, which is what we are doing. Our competitors do not leverage this. Um, there actually is really not a competitor. There are aspects to what we do. That are competitive, but we significant. We look at everybody as collaborative, not competitive. Um, even, you know, we can see ourselves being collaborative with SoundCloud one day. We can see ourselves being collaborative with Spotify one day. Um, you know, our technology is not meant to, uh, you know, come in and 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 um, overtake what people do. It's just meant to disrupt the process of how antiquated and old school it is. Uh, and and we're already seeing that people that are having the experience, you know, music, you know, jaded music supervisors, seeing how they can go and discover music uh, within seconds of what would have normally take them weeks. Um, we're, we're even seeing the most, like I said, the most jaded supervisors, uh, kind of blown away by by the ease of use and the discovery. And quite frankly, the best part, the best argument that we can say to people is, it's not doing your job for you. It's helping you do a better job. Uh, and you know you're going to now discover music that was undiscoverable in the past, uh, and you're going to be able to license that within your budget constraints, and uh, and it's a win-win-win for everyone. Well, thank you, Justin, and thank you everyone for joining today's webinar. Today's webinar recording will soon be made available on uh, Song Industry's website. If you have any additional questions that have not been addressed in this webinar, please feel free to email us at songistry at rbmilestone.com. Again, that's songistry at rbmilestone.com. Thank you again, and you are now free to disconnect. Thank you, Justin. Thank you, everyone.